Hey guys, so today I'm filming my beginner's guide to makeup on powders. I've already filmed one on foundation and concealer, which I will have linked down below. I'm also going to have an accompanying blog post with pictures of the packaging of all these powders, how much it costs, where you can get it, how many shades are available, and the name of all the shades. So I'm going to have that in a blog post down below. And powder is something that I have tried a ton in search for the perfect powder for me. So I'm going to be going over five different types. Under eye powder, setting powder, powder with coverage, matte powder, and touch up powder. You can use the same powder for multiple purposes, um, but I'm just going to break it down for you guys. And I have tried a lot of powders and I have some recommendations that other people have loved. So please leave a comment down below of your favorite powders so everybody can know about that and let me know your thoughts on the powders I'm mentioning as well. So I'm gonna start with under eye setting powder. Not everybody needs to wear powder. I know some dry skin girls don't like powder, um, but it really just depends on the type that you purchase but I do always recommend setting your under eye concealer to make sure that it does not crease. So for under eye setting powder I have five recommendations. The first would be the Ben Nye Luxury Powders. I have the shade Cameo which is a fair powder with a pink undertone and they also have one in Banana which is more of a yellow tone powder which would be great for medium or olive skin tones. They also have a couple different shades but Cameo and Banana are great for setting highlight on the skin or concealer to help brighten and these also give really good coverage and they come in a ton of skin tone shades as well if you do want this to just set your entire face um, but I have used a good bit as you can see and I really enjoy this for setting my under eyes and um, this is as you can tell a loose powder but I think it works really well and gives great coverage and I love this for setting my highlighted areas on my face and just for extra brightening the next powder I want to recommend would be the MAC Shaping Powders. This is a pro product that you can buy online or in the pro store. This comes in five different shades. I have the lightest, which is emphasized. The good thing about these powders is that they will have a shade that will flatter any skin tone, and this does give some coverage, and it has a little bit of a shine to it to really help make those areas glow wherever you apply this. So I like to set my under eye concealer with this, and again, it's very brightening and just really beautiful and um, sets my under eye concealer really well without making it look cakey or heavy so this is a really great powder to set your under eyes with as well so the next powder I'm going to recommend is a drugstore. This is the Wet n Wild Fergie Mattifying Take on the Day Powder. This is a powder that I've been using recently. This is translucent, but it has some light reflecting particles in this. This is a dupe for the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. A lot of people love that. That comes in a pressed and a loose version, so I would recommend that as well. But if you were interested in the pressed version of the NARS powder, I would try this instead because this did not really have a filmy layer on top. It did have a slight one, but I just took my brush, ran over it once, and it was good to go. I know the NARS, you have to dig in there so much that I don't think the NARS is worth it, but if you're interested in that type of product, check this out, and if you want the NARS, try the loose version. I've heard great things about that. This and the NARS will both set your concealer and keep you matte, but it has some luminosity to it. I like to use this under my eyes because it is a silica powder, so it just is super smooth, and I only need the smallest amount of powder to set my under eyes, which is especially great for anybody with dry skin or dry under eyes because if you put too much powder under your eyes it will make them look cakey and and heavy and you do not want that if you have dry under eyes so I really really recommend this powder it is a really great option another powder I want to recommend is the hourglass ambient lighting powders these come in a ton of shades some um, might be better for setting the entire face some have more shimmer for like a cheek highlight and some have like a nice subtle glow to highlight under the eyes so I will try to look up a video on the hourglass powders and I'll have it linked down below. I've not tried them so I don't know too much about them but they are very expensive powders and I think the options that I showed you will work just as well. So the next category is setting powder and this is just what it says. It will set your foundation. Sometimes foundations are a little bit sticky and tacky and to keep them in place all day and not transferring on things it is good to set them with the powder. 
So for these setting powders, they are going to have little to no coverage. They are just going to be to set. So these would especially be great for a dry skin person because they're not going to be mattifying and they're not going to have coverage. So they're not going to be really cakey on your skin. Um, so I have a couple loose versions and pressed versions to share with you. The first one I have is the e.l.f. High Definition Powder. This comes in a translucent shade, a corrective yellow, and a shade that has a little bit of luminosity to it. I prefer the yellow shade because this does color correct a little bit my redness on my cheeks. This is supposed to be a dupe of the Makeup Forever HD powder. The HD powder can sometimes give flashback, which means that if there is a flash photography photo taken of you, it will bounce off of that powder and make you look white. So that is why I got the corrective yellow shade because it, it won't really add a lot of color or coverage, but you won't have to worry about that flashback happening. But I think this is a really great powder. I'm actually using it today to set my foundation. This is really great for anybody with dry to normal combo skin. If you have super oily skin, this is not going to keep you matte, but I think this is a great powder. Another loose powder that I like is the NYX Set It Don't Fret It. This is a matte silica powder, so this will keep you matte, but it won't be cakey. It again has that silica texture, so it just glides over pores and lines without um, sinking into them, and this is just a really, really great product. It comes in two shades. It does not give you much coverage at all. It really does just set your foundation, and it does help keep you matte for a little longer. The other powder I wanted to recommend is the MAC Prep and Prime. This comes in a loose and a press version. I've heard better things about the loose and again it is just a translucent powder to set the face. Um, I've heard really great things about that. So now I have three pressed powders I would recommend for setting. First would be the Revlon Nearly Naked Powder. I do not have that because I did not like it. It did not keep me matte and it did not give me enough coverage. This this line of powder does tend to be a little dark. The fair shade was too dark for me, so go a shade down than you think you normally are. And I felt that it oxidized a little bit on me, um, but that was just me personally. I've not really heard that for anybody else, but I have heard that it is darker than it looks, so go a shade down than you think you are. But I have heard this is really great for setting the face. It gives very, very light coverage, if any, but it's just good to set your makeup. My next powder is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. I have the shade Light. This again gives a very, very light coverage. This is good for setting the face. This does not really work for me because I'm too oily for it, but if you are dry, normal, or combo skin, I think this would be great. It is a beautiful powder. It does not look cakey whatsoever, and I really do recommend this. I think it's a really great product, and again, this gives very light coverage. And the last powder I wanted to recommend is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. I mentioned this for setting the under eye area. Some of these will be great to set the face. They won't have glitter in them. They'll just have some luminosity. Again, like I said, the Hourglass powders have different shades, but they also have a little bit of different finishes within them. Some are just like a normal setting powder and some have a bit more glow, some have a bit more of a sheen. So I will, like I said, look up a video on that and have that down below. So now onto the powders that will give coverage. In my foundation video, I talked about some powder foundations, so of course that will give you coverage. Um, so if you want to hear about those, check that video to hear more about them. So I just want to talk about some actual just face powders that will give you a little bit of coverage. The first is the Maybelline Dream Wonder. I have not tried that yet. Um, I did hear from someone that it did oxidize three shades darker, so I didn't want to try that because even the lightest shade looked like it would match me perfectly, so then if it oxidized it would be too dark, but I've heard great things about this powder that it will set your face beautifully and give a, a light medium coverage, and it looks like there is no powder on your skin whatsoever. It blends in effortlessly, so I think that sounds like a great, great powder. Um, I know Emily Noel 83 did a review on it. I will have that link down below so you can hear her thoughts and see her apply it. The next powder I wanted to mention is the L'Oreal True Match. The L'Oreal True Match powders come in a wide variety of shades. I would say that it gives about medium coverage, which is which is really wonderful. Um, I liked to use it over top of my foundation. I've not used it in a couple years, but I loved it when I first got it. Again, this has a really nice natural finish. It gives good coverage and it is not going to look cakey whether you wear it alone or on top of a liquid foundation. The next powder I want to mention for coverage is the Milani Multitasker. This is a really Really great powder. It comes in a wide variety of shades. I have a shade that light medium and this sets my foundation really well and this also has a really beautiful medium coverage. I 
really do like this. I think this is a great powder and I think this would work for all skin types. Dry skin, the driest of skin, maybe not, but I think this works for all skin types. This is a good powder for me in the winter, but in the summer I'm too oily for this, but I do really recommend this. This gives beautiful coverage. It won't look powdery or cakey on the skin. Really great option. Another powder that will give you coverage is a powder foundation, but I have only used this as a setting powder. This is the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. I have the shade number two, Nude. You can tell I love this. I've hit pan on it. This is such a great powder. Like I said, I only use this as a setting powder, and this gives really nice medium to full coverage. It is beautiful. It does not look cakey whatsoever because this powder has a little bit of a luminosity to it to keep you from looking flat and heavy and cakey so this is probably my favorite powder the one that I recommend the most and I think this would work for all skin types the last powder for coverage that I want to recommend is the MAC care blend press powder I have heard that this gives a nice medium coverage and it has a natural finish so it will not look cakey and it will just give you a little bit extra coverage okay so now I'm gonna move on to matte powders I have four options for you and I'm going to suggest a matte powder for each of the four skin types now I'm not saying that only the skin type can wear this powder. Um, a lot of these powders work for me um, at different times of the year, depending on how oily my skin is, but I just went to give a recommendation of matte powder for each skin type. So for dry skin, I wanna recommend the Rimmel Stay Matte. Since I am super oily, that's not doing enough for me, but I know a lot of dry skin girls that really enjoy that powder. It um, comes in a translucent shade, also some skin tone shades that will apply a very light coverage, but it does, it will give you a matte finish to your makeup and it will keep oil at bay. So my recommendation for normal skin would be the Milani Multitasker Face Powder. Um, like I already mentioned, this is, gives really nice and medium coverage, but this is a matte finish, but it's not cakey looking. And I really recommend this for normal skin. This works good for me in the winter, but that's the only time of year. Um, so I would recommend this for normal skin and it's a really great powder, it comes in a lot of shades. Definitely recommend this one. My matte powder recommendation for combo skin would be the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. Um, like I said, I have a shade Nude. I love this at all times of the year. This doesn't make me cakey. It has a little bit of a luminosity to it, but this keeps me more matte than the Rimmel and than the Milani. So I really, really recommend this. I think it would work for all skin types, and I think this would be a really great powder for combo skin. So a matte powder for oily skin I want to recommend is actually discontinued, so I'm sorry to show this to you, but I know a lot of people already have it, and that would be the Maybelline Dream Matte Powder. This has been replaced with the Dream Wonder, and they are not the same, um, but this will keep you super matte. Um, this did not work for me in the winter time because this will cling to dry spots really bad, so I like this for oily, oily skin girls or just an oily T-zone, so this is a great powder for that. I'm sorry to show you something discontinued, but I still wanted to tell you about it since I know a lot of people have already tried this. So now moving on to touch-up powders, I have four to recommend to you, and for a touch-up powder, you want to get something that is translucent because your makeup, once you have it set for the day, you've customized it with foundation and powder concealer to match your skin tone. If you are touching up with a product that has coverage or color, it will then change the color. So you want to powder throughout the day with a translucent powder so it will not change the color of your face makeup. So the first one that I recommend is, again, the Maybelline Dream Matte. I like this a lot for touching up throughout the day. I think this is a great powder for that. And this provides and this provides no coverage whatsoever. It does come in skin tone shades, but like I said, no coverage. I like this one a lot for touching up. Another powder that I do not have, but I've heard so many great things about is the Neutrogena Shine Control Powder. It has rice protein complex in there that will absorb the oil on your skin and it will keep you matte and looking fresh. The next powder I'm going to recommend for touch-ups would be the NYX Blotting Powder. This is a powder that I would not say you should set your makeup with. I mean, you definitely can, but I would recommend this most for touch-ups. This has very little coverage to it. Um, it just blends into your skin. And this is the shade Light. It looks white, but my recommendation for these powders is go with 
the shade range, like I'm traditionally a light shade range, so I picked up this powder. If you're traditionally light medium, go with the light medium shade because this will customize to your skin tone. So um, just wanted to put that out there, but I do love this powder a lot for touch-ups. It keeps me looking matte, but it doesn't get cakey. Um, so I recommend only using this if you're extremely oily. Um, I don't think this would be good for a dry skin person. I think it will cling to dry patches, but I really, really enjoy this for touching up. And a similar product to the NYX is the MAC Blot Powder. Again, I've not tried it, but I've heard great things about that. Just the same thing to touch up on any oily areas throughout the day. And um, I definitely recommend that. So guys, those are all of my powder recommendations. I went over five different types of powder. Of course, like I said, you can have a couple powders that will um, work for multiple categories, but I just wanted to give you my recommendations. So please leave a comment down below of your favorite powder and also let me know that your skin type so I can know what works best for you. I hope you all enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check the blog post for tons more information of the price and the shades and the packaging and whatnot. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.